Hey guys, and welcome back to the ASX Investor Channel and welcome to another interview. Today, we'll be diving into the world of robotics and automation. I know it's a future-focused industry that many people are interested in. There's a lot of focus about how you could get involved or how you could consider companies in the sector. Today, we'll be talking about UiPath. They're a company that recently listed and IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $25 billion. They really leverage RPA, robotic process automation, at the core of everything that they do to automate workflows and processes for many of the leading global companies. It's a fascinating opportunity. It's a really exciting sector. We're really grateful to be joined by the Managing Director of Australia, Andrew Phillips on the channel. Andrew, it's a pleasure to have you, mate, and welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for spending some time with me. Really appreciate your time. I'd love just to start off before we discuss all of the different nuances and all of the different aspects about RPA and of course who UiPath is. Can you give us that overview about the UiPath story and what that problem is that you're trying to solve? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think uh, I think first off, it's probably it's probably good to say that we don't actually build physical robots. Um, these are essentially software robots or software automations. Uh, that sit on either back-end servers or, or laptops or, des or, or desktops. Um, so robotic process automation or RPA um, is the use of software tools uh, to automate or to digitize uh, the, the analog work that employees are doing on their computers, the, the work that's boring and mundane and repetitive. And it offloads these tools so that humans can focus on the things that they're, that they're good at. So I suppose a good example of that um, that a lot of people would understand is, is in the finance world, at least, is in the area of audit. So a lot of data needs to be collected uh, to do an audit, but then humans are only really needed to do the analysis, to assess the risk, and to put into place the actions uh, to offset that risk. And so a lot of time in audit is spent collecting the data and pulling it together from you know, many different um, uh, uh, sources and only at the end do people actually do the stuff that people are good at, uh, which is, is, is the decision-making. And so the, the bots can collect that data and actually start to make a bit of sense of the patterns within it and then hand it to the, to the human to do the decision-making, the stuff that the humans are best at. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense intuitively. And I know we spoke earlier that I've been thinking about how we can automate some potential processes from the work that I do. It's a really interesting discussion. I'd love just to have that bit of an overview about what are the benefits? Of course, when people are doing the work, they want to see the ROI, they want those time savings, the ability to focus more on those intelligent and creative decisions rather than that manual processes. What are those benefits that customers come to UiPath for? Yeah, this is all about productivity. Uh, it's all about either they're getting more out of the people that you currently have, or in the days of recovery from COVID, building back an organization that's leaner than it was before, but doing the same amount of work that it was doing before. So I think any single person in, a, in any job, whether you're the CEO or whether you're an entry level intern coming into an organization, has got a bunch of tasks that they do that they know that they don't need to be doing repetitive things that happen either every day, every week or every month um, that are really adding not a huge amount of value in the, in the collation of that information or the, the swivel chair, copy and pasting from one, from one app to another, um, yet they're still doing that. You know, we're, 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 we're hiring these people to do the work that can really be offloaded to, to machines. Um, and so organisations are getting productivity gains here um, that, that, are, that are really astronomical. Uh, and they often start from the very first day that the bots are turned on. A task that might have taken three minutes to do before can literally be done in seconds to allow the people to serve customers more, um, to do higher value work, or to do those things that sit in all of our to-do lists that are just a little bit out of reach because we just don't have the time in the day. Um, so, you know, while these bots are doing mundane, repetitive, boring work, uh, it's freeing up time and that equation adds to higher productivity. And that's, that's, that's really where this is. And so it's up to business leaders to then decide what are we going to do with that extra time? How can we advance either the organization's profitability, reduce their cost, or in the case of government where we work a lot, um, serve citizens better. 
Yeah, it's fascinating. And just having a look at some of the global customer base for UiPath from Google to NASA to Airbus, there's some leading names already leveraging this technology and it's likely to proliferate out further as it continues to grow. I'd love to just hear a unique use case that you've seen or an example of a company using UiPath automation and the end benefits that they've really achieved out of that. Yeah, well, we had a, um, we've, had a, we've had a retailer here in Australia through, through COVID um, who has a, a number of small suppliers that are, that are, that are providing um, uh, the retail goods to them. And a lot of these suppliers were struggling, especially in the early days of, 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 of COVID. And so what they decided to do is instead of the 45 to 60 day payment terms that they were paying these employee, that these, these suppliers with, they brought that down to 10 days. Now, it wasn't going to be permanent. It was a short-term um, um, help that they were providing for them. But, you know, can you imagine taking a, you know, invoice times that were getting to 45 to 60 days and getting them down to 10 days? You would have to put thousands of extra people on for that, for that type of thing. But they were able to do that pretty much within a few days. And so now while they revert back after when, when COVID comes back, that also gives them the ability to go to those providers and say, hey, what if we were able to do it in say 30 days instead of the 45 days before? What impact would that make to you? And how can we use that to serve our joint customers uh, better? So, you know, that, that ability to take those things that were people heavy um, and, and, and really take a lot of the, the fat and the inefficiencies out of that, um, that's just one example there. Um, but there's, you know, there's many other ones. I mean, another COVID related one uh, was a Dublin hospital uh, who, who took away three hours of administrative work from nurses, um, especially on the COVID wards, because the amount of admin that was associated with COVID had really skyrocketed. They were able to take three hours of, of time back. Now, on the one hand, you could say, well, that saves three hours times whatever a nurse has paid in an hour. But actually, that's how they weren't thinking about it. They were thinking, how many more patients, how much more patient time can an individual nurse spend once that administrative time, that pointing and clicking on a computer back at the, at the, at the desk, what can that translate to in terms of human benefit? Um, you know, we've got a whole raft of, of, of these type of, of examples. And while each of these are case by case, when you look at it across the whole organization, and when an organization gets an automation first mindset, um, that's, that's really where it takes off and you know, this isn't a project that's just done in one year. It's a new way of thinking that says people shouldn't be doing the tasks that don't add value to the customers that the people really want to be working on. It truly is a compelling proposition and I'm sure everyone can see the ROI and the opportunity for benefit there. But we know that at the moment, there's a lot of discussion surrounding ESG and the opportunity yeah. that companies really have to focus on that. Recently, UiPath released their 2020 ESG overview. There's four key pillars and we also hear a lot of discussion surrounding beneficial AI as well. Just wanted to hear some of your reflections about how UiPath can sit in this opportunity and really benefit companies around the world. Yeah, sure. So we've got we've got four pillars to our to our ESG in the report. Um, three of them, I suppose, are being are about being um, uh, good citizens, uh, and you know those those three empowering our people and the community. So making sure that we're a great place to work, um, and you know making sure that we have um, uh, good diversity amongst our amongst our workforce, and that we have a philanthropic arm. So in the countries that we operate. Um, we're helping uh, you know, university students or people getting into university and, and, and helping them come into this new digitized uh, uh, world. We're also, um, we also focus a lot on, on the protecting the environment, the E side of things um, ourselves, uh, ensuring that we, we have a cloud first uh, 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 policy. Um, and then, you know, also fostering good governance within, within our own environment. We've hired a chief culture, we've appointed a chief culture officer um, uh, to make sure that we're overse overseeing the people side of things, also, you know, a corporate governance committee. So those are all areas. And, you know, we're, while we're a growing company, we're relatively um, small compared to the hundreds of thousands of, of um, uh, employee companies around the world. The biggest impact that we can really have with them is, is helping them to leverage automation for good. Um, so, you know, looking at that social side of things, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk at the moment about people or this great resignation, people leaving a job and going to, going to other jobs. And, you know, if, if, if corporations can create environments 
where people aren't doing these boring, mundane, repetitive tasks that they know that they shouldn't really have to do. Um, it improves the quality of life for people. Uh, I think, you know, this working from home has blurred those, that work-life balance um, as well. And you know, I think employees are rightfully disgruntled if they feel like they're working on tasks that they know that there's a solution out there that they don't need to be doing those things. And so once you take that multiplier effect with the thousands of customers that we've got, and some of these customers have got hundreds of thousands of employees, um, it really is improving the workplace, um, improving productivity as well, and improving not only customer satisfaction, but employee satisfaction as well. Yeah, it's fascinating. It'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. I'd love just to touch a little bit, I guess, on that end goal of fully automated enterprise. Can you speak about what that means and how the pathway towards that journey will be for UiPath? Yeah, absolutely. So um, RPA, Robotic Process Automation, started with bots and the bots did things. Um, and, you know, often customers still come with some ideas that they would like to automate first and, and we can get going very quickly. The return on investment for this is on average less than seven months. So you can get a return very, very quickly, often within the same financial year for the initial investment. But once those low hanging fruits are, 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 are done, organizations are often then looking at, 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 at where else they can, they can automate and, and about getting this automation mindset, automation first mindset um, within, within their company or within their um, uh, agency. Um, and so we've, we've created tools around a platform of intelligent automation that go from ideation. So people can just put an idea in there to say, hey, I shouldn't be doing this task. Can you help? Uh, and then the center of excellence that's, that's, that's managing the automation initiative can look at that and help digitize those tasks through task mining and task capture uh, and then turn them into, in, into, into bots that can take that task off the people. And then, you know, there's also a huge amount of data that's being generated from tools that organizations use, logs that can be, can be put into tools like process mining that can map the process out and, and tell an organization which bits can be automated and which bits are inefficient. Um, and, and so often with that, through that process, organizations find broken processes that were really sucking people's time and you know, even if they automate parts of them and not the whole lot, they're still getting a huge benefit. And then, and then there's other things that also go into a fully automated enterprise as well. There's a huge amount of documents, whether they're handwritten, computer generated, web forms um, that need to be understood. And while OCR, optical character recognition tools have been around for some, while, some time, document understanding, which is really understanding what's happening on that page uh, and, and, and taking the information there and making sense of it. Um, so document understanding then becomes a part of that as well. And then of course, you also need to um, understand how efficient these bots are. And so we have tools um, around the analytic um, uh, uh, side of that. And then I think the last part there is once the, once the IT team or the business has, has come up with all the ideas that they can come up with, um, these, the, the, the tools that we have are uh, uh, increasingly becoming so much easier to use. People like you and I who, who are doing day-to-day -day tasks, that they can create their own automations for the work that's unique to them that's, that's sitting on their desktop. And that's called citizen development. Um, and the governance tools that go around that to ensure that an organization has, um, has control over that and it just doesn't run wild and that the security and government go governance and compliance of that is being maintained. That's all critically important as well. So UiPath is the only organization that offers all of those um, tools in a complete platform that a customer can come on at any stage or can come on with a fully automated, automated enterprise right from the get-go. Yeah, that leads into something I was interested to ask you about. At the moment, UiPath is predominantly focused at that enterprise level, but do you foresee it moving forward into the SME space and then eventually onto an individual customer basis as well as automation AI rolls out? Yeah, interestingly, um, we, we, we started as an organization that had both unattended bots, which is what you're talking about there, um, and attended bots, which are the ones that, that sit out on people's, on, on people's desktops. So, you know, right, right from the start, we've had the ability to do exactly what you're talking there, work, work with the individual or work with the organization. And that's been a real key differentiator uh, uh, for us. And then the AI that goes into that, that allows the bots to 
predict what's going to be happening, suggest to the user that there may be better ways of doing it than the way that, they've, that they have been doing it, um, and constantly learn through tools like computer vision, um, which instead of looking at a screen and just seeing pixels like the old screen scraping used to be, it actually understands when it says invoice that, that the next one could say receipt or you know, it could be invoice abbreviated. And so the AI that goes into that is critically important. And you know, we've been around for a little while now and there really is no compression algorithm for experience when it comes to that and understanding you know, all of the different use cases, the connectors that are needed and training those AI tools to make sense of that. So, um, you know, this is a technology that can be used in a corner store, in the biggest miners, the biggest banks around the world. And there's various levels of entry from our free community edition right up to enterprise tools. So really, um, we've also, we also offer free training for everyone. Um, so anybody can get, can get into this and see whether it's, it's the right thing for them and for their organization as well. It is a fascinating roadmap up ahead. We know that, of course, the digital adoption is only going to continue to pick up pace moving forward. I'd love just to leave you with a platform for any final reflections that you wanted to share with the community out there. Yeah, thanks. So I think um, one of the things that I encourage any leader, whether you're managing a few people, whether you're just an individual contributor and a leader, or whether you're the CEO, is to just think about what are people really working on? We know they're out the output that they, that they get, right? But what are people really working on? And, and the things that they're working on, are they in the job description? Was that something that was sold to the person as, as, as what they would be doing? Now, we all know that there's a bunch of things, like these, these tasks that, that people don't really want to do, but they just they need to be doing. Um, automation can take those off their plate and allow them to focus on the things that are in the job description the thought leadership, the strategy side of things, the ideation, the leading teams, the people involvement. Bots can't do all of those things, but they can do the things that people generally don't talk about that, are, that, that they're doing on their day-to-day -day tasks. So that's, that's really where I'd, I'd, um, I'd want people to think is, you know, if you hate it, automate it. You know, if, if it can be automated, it should be automated. Take those tasks off people's plates and allow them the time, the mind space, and, and that creativity to, to get the things done that they were really hired for. That is the UiPath story. It's listed on the New York Stock Exchange, N-Y-S-E-P-A-T-H. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make daily videos, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. Andrew, I had a real pleasure unpacking the story. We know the future is AI, and it was really interesting to get an insight about how it could look moving forward. Thank you so much for joining us on the channel. Great to talk to you. Thanks very much.